Hey, welcome to Q the Next Leader. This is Angela Rizzo, Chief Marketing Officer at VinQ. Today, we're going to be talking to Jason Cole and Jennifer Taylor, both at the uh, Bill Cole Auto Mall. Uh, there, they've been using the VinQ Vehicle Buying Center. And uh, let's hear a little bit about their story. Hey, Jason. Hey, how you doing? Can you tell me a little bit about uh, your dealership? Uh, I believe that you're related to Bill Cole. Can you tell us about uh, about that and um, how long you've been in the car business? Uh, we've been in since uh, 2000 when we first got in the business for so 22 years. And um, it's, it's family owned. I mean, my grandfather was in the car business. Dad, Dad actually did heavy duty truck parts, but sold it and got into the car business in 2000. And um, I wanted to, I was always jealous because my cousins were car dealers. They're going to live that glamorous lifestyle. And then I got what I wished for and realized that you work seven days a week in the car business. So I wish, I wish I could go back to truck parts. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you have to be careful what you wish for because more times than not, you actually get it, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. But we've got, um, you probably know the franchise. Right? We've got Honda Nissan Subaru Kia in Bluefield, West Virginia, and then Honda Nissan Ford Lincoln in Ashland, Kentucky, and then uh, three or four used car lots. Well, my name is Jennifer Taylor. I am the business development director here at the dealership, um, internet director, however you want to reference it. Um, I have been with Mr. Cole for the last nine years. Um, in that nine-year time span, I have done a little bit of everything, uh, but my heart's in the BDC. <laughs> That's where I want to be. Um, the BDC is more my life than hanging out on the sales floor for certain. Um, we do everything in our BDC. So we have a centralized business development center, which Mr. Cole has the six locations in West Virginia. We have six locations in Kentucky. And out of that, no phone rings anywhere but in my little world. <laughs> so we have to direct the traffic wherever it needs to go and know what everybody's doing at all times. And it's quite fun. Um, but we have a service and sales BDC together. So everything is done all under one roof which makes it much more convenient. You know, if you train one, you train them all, and it's not you have to do it times multiple. Um, so that's good. Um, but I've been here for quite some time. Jason and I have worked very closely to grow our BDC and, and what it is since it is the way of today, the way of now. <laughs> and if that's we're great. not, we don't have it and we're not ready, we're not going to succeed. Wow, that's great. And uh, are you using the VinQ Vehicle Buying, uh, vehicle buying Center across across all properties yeah we've got one 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 for our bluefield location and then one for our Ashland location and we share our used car inventory i mean even between we've got the the, the stores in bluefield we actually have all our pre owned well two lots one main lot and then we've got another little lot across town and then so ashland has a used lot in ford and then a used lot in our honda nissan and um, so they definitely share inventory, but we also share used cars between Bluefield and Ashland. But it makes sense for VinQ to have, you know, we need it one for each market. Mm -hmm. Well, I love the fact that you're you're uh, managing all of these different stores from the one location. Yeah. Um, how long have you been doing that? So let's see. In February of 2019. We, Mr. Cole owned, of course, all of these stores, but they've really been, in the past, had been managed as different. They had been separated, and there wasn't uniform management across the board. Um, but in February of 2019, we started to change that. So we started then integrating, and we integrated our Ford location, which is in Ashland. And then in January of 20, we pulled in the Honda Nissan store. So by January 20, we had everything under one roof. I love it. And so you were the, you have been here since the beginning, since you've been here yeah. nine years. So did <laughs> yeah. you help, did you help like uh, uh, plan and, and design yep. what this was going to look like? Can you yeah. tell me a little bit about your vision? 
Well, it it has grown exponentially from what we ever thought it would be, um, or any any plans or ideas, or you know, <laughs> it has grown greatly from what you know way back when, um, back in 2017, I think I was promoted from manager to director, and it kind of just all fell in my lap. And then you know we were thinking the next five years we'll be looking at pulling. Kentucky in and, and it just happened so much faster. Um, but we really, we were ahead of everyone else in our market with our business development center, our internet department, um, the medias we were using to advertise to customers and to pull traffic in. And it just like the purchasing of cars, you know, we were before everybody else was doing that. We were, we started it first. So that innovation was very helpful to get us where we are, but um, the the plan it has outgrown the plan <laughs> to say the least it has grown bigger than we ever thought it would uh, but COVID pushed that along exponentially uh, which I think every market has seen that that you know the world the digital world has grown so much in just the last couple of years um, but our plan was was just to build a strong business development center and we knew at some point in time the way technology went that you know one day we would only need a delivery specialist on the floor we wouldn't need what we were known as salespeople, you know so we knew that would happen one day and and we wanted to have strong intelligent people behind behind the scenes that could could do what they needed to when that day came so we were preparing for the future and it just came a little faster which salespeople are still a very vital part these days but a strong bdc is what gets the customer here they want to do everything online they want to do everything start to finish and they just want to come pick up the car um, in our market we're a very rural area whether in kentucky or west virginia so we're not in like the metro areas where that has has taken off as quickly we still have people that want to visit us you know we still have people that want to come in and do things face to face and and truthfully in some of our area that we sell to they don't even have internet there's no cell phone service there's still no no internet out there in those parts so um that's i think one of the reasons that we're not not as fast we're not there yet like the metro areas Tell me a sure. little bit more about, yeah, that, that's that's fascinating. Can you tell me a little bit more about your BDC? Are you primarily focused on selling cars and buying cars, or do you tend to lean on- Little of everything, little of everything. So our so we have a service team, and the service team, they're kind of segregated on their own, and they work with scheduling service appointments. They do some reception work, but we start there by initially- just trying to get a hand raiser. Are you interested in selling your car? That's where we start the process. So when these customers are scheduling service, we of course have a, a time frame that we look at when they purchase a car. It, you know, is it have they had it long enough that they're going to be able to get out of it? You know, is this a possibility? So we have some of those time frames set up. But as the agents are scheduling service appointments, the next step at the very end is, hey, would you like to get a, an appraisal of your vehicle while you're here? And that starts the ball rolling on that side. We have a team on the sales floor that will go out and meet those customers, try to give them a value of their car and try to turn that into a car deal. And that was something we started many, many years ago. Um, but we start there. And then our sales team, they, of course, we have really, until we started using VinQ, we, everybody focused on whatever they could do. You know, they were, there wasn't a, you know, you only work on selling cars and you only work on buying cars. It was whenever you talk to the customer, you're trained to handle it, whichever direction they need to go. And should they decide that they can't trade this car or don't want to trade this car, let's talk about buying the car. What can we do there? Um, and then once we, of course, adapted our VBC, we have specified agents that handle just that. Um, they, of course, have some other responsibilities, but they work on just reaching out to those customers to purchase vehicles. That's great. Tell me a little bit how the VinQ VBC helped you in your innovation and your transformation. Sure. The VBC is very helpful because it puts everything under one roof. You know, we, we learned long ago that the third party buying sites, they have little conversions, very little conversions. So when you are working with auto trader or cars.com and it just, it wasn't a converting tool for us, but when it did convert, I'd go back and look and see, well, I have these customers. I got them from a website lead. 
So I already had the lead. I didn't even need this, you know. So we years ago went away from those third party sites. And now in the market that we're in, those are important because we got to buy things. You know, we, we have to have inventory to sell the same business. Um, so it has been able to put all of those under one one platform, one dashboard. It's been able to combine all of that together to make it so much more seamless because you're not going into 12 different sites or forgetting to check one or, you know, it's not. I'm sure that their innovation has grown as well with the times, but it's made it so much easier for us to work with them as it wasn't in the past. So you basically use VinQ as the window into uh, cargurus.com, yep. uh, yep. autotrader.com, Facebook marketplace and Craigslist. And yep. that's where you're going after the inventory. Yes. Absolutely. We put it in one place and it's so much easier. You know, we long, long time ago, many, many moons ago, you would have one person designated to one thing and that was what they did when they were out sick. They, their kid was sick. That was their day off because nobody can work every waking hour. No one touched that. Well, she handles auto trader. I don't know anything about auto trader. I don't go into auto trader. I don't know. I don't know that this allows us to alleviate that problem. Now I have three, four different agents that are working collectively together and they're not assigned to one store or the other. They can see, oh, somebody responded from Auto Trader. I need to go help her. She's off today. This response needs to be handled. And it's, you're not waiting on somebody else to pick it up. And it's not, it's just so much easier to see and, you know, not miss that communication with your customer. That's great. So you train everybody in VinQ. And then yes. they can work across the board. Yep. Can you, when you think about your success today, uh, what are some of the most inf- important factors that are that are behind your success? Well, I mean, I don't. I mean, I'm a big believer in. A, I mean, as far as you know, I guess in general for a dealership to be successful, I believe in the you know, having a BDC and that sort of that model. We've got one centralized BDC and. So we're we're very process oriented dealership, and we've you know, got to follow the process in the sales department, but also in your internet sales department, and you know all that kind of stuff. I mean, on a more um, more of a I guess current condition thing. I mean, inventory's obviously been the struggle, and doing everything you can to acquire inventory. Um, while we've been dealing with this, uh, you know, manufacturing shortage. Mm-hmm. How many cars do you do you typically buy in a month across all your dealerships? I mean, Jennifer, probably about 30 per location is what we're buying right now. Maybe On a little average, bit more up in Ash. Yeah, last I mean, night, Ashland did really well, but on average, I would say 30 per. Well, uh, and then we, we've, uh, yeah, per yeah, one in Kentucky, one in West Virginia. But, you know, we're not – we are buying a few at the auction. We've actually bought a few off of Enterprise the past um, few months up in Ashland. They've come down to a little bit more reasonable. But, you know, we don't like going and buying cars from the auction because they're, they're bringing so much money. I mean, it's just it doesn't really fit our business model. I mean, we're intensive in reconditioning, and we really set the cars right. And we're not a – you know, we're a smaller – um market so you know we we can't you know we have to maintain profitability on our you know used and new car sales um just because we don't have the volume even in you know when times were good as far as volume is concerned we were still you know we didn't we couldn't sell near enough to to kind of we can't have a v auto mentality that would put us under real quickly Tell me, tell me what you mean by that. Well, with V Auto, I mean they, you know, you'll buy cars, you'll, you'll buy cars or trade for cars, and they'll look at the market and the day supply, and I mean they'll have you, you know, list cars for a for a loser to where you're losing money before you ever even put it on the lot. I mean, they're, they're, they 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 have the mindset that price sells cars, and you know. We disagree. We we think you build value to sell cars. You know, we do a lifetime warranty on new, a ten year, hundred thousand mile warranty on pre owned, and we really do set our cars right. I mean, that helps with your the, the your 
the profitability of your service and parts department, but it also gives you something to sell when you're going over the vehicle. I mean, we show that I mean, 95% of the vehicles we sell are one owned local trade ins, and they've been maintained with us departments. And, you know, on top of that, you show them a repair order where we, you know, we put new brakes, new tires, whatever the vehicle needs before selling it to them. So, um, you, you have to build value and justify gross profit versus the V auto dealers. It's just a, it's a race to the bottom and who can price their cars the lowest. And, and that, that may work in certain markets. If you're in a, if you're in a more, a bigger metropolitan market, you can, and you're selling, you know, 400 a month. And, you know, that, that business model may work, but it's damn sure doesn't work in Bluefield, West Virginia, or, you know, so, Southern West Virginia, or, you know, Southeast Kentucky. Mm -hmm. What was it that made you curious to check out VinQ? We came up with a deal, uh, maxformine.com. Um, it was just a, we've been pushing hard to try to acquire used car inventory. And um, I thought that if we came up with one that sort of has more of a national feel to it, versus being a local car dealer. So we created maxformine.com and to sort of kind of co combat the Carvana commercials which you'll see online or on, on TV. And, and I was just hoping it would be another avenue for us to acquire inventory. Um, a buddy of mine, Aaron Bicker, who used to work for Team Velocity, who's our, I mean, I guess still does. He went to work for a sister company and they, it's branched out quite a bit, but I think he was involved with, um, gosh, what's the owner's name? I'm drawing a blank. Thank you. Uh, we have Chris Hoke is the CEO, and Danny Zadlaski is the managing partner. Yeah, and that, yeah, Danny. So Danny. Um, yeah, I think Aaron maybe had something to do with maybe the creation of the software or some, something or another, uh -huh. but, you know, Aaron and I have stayed in touch, and I showed him what I was doing with that MaxForMind.com, and he said, well, you need to give this guy a call. He's, you and him are kind of on the same, you know, similar thought, you know, mind track on some of the stuff. But what really, once once I met him, the thing that I liked the most, and I, you know, I'm the, um, the outbound part. I mean, I, I like the idea of, of the, the CRM tool where you're, combining Facebook Marketplace and Cars.com and uh, what is the other one? Car Gurus and Craigslist. What's the other one? Um, Craigslist. And then to give our, our people an opportunity to see private listings. And, you know, like I said, I'm real BDC driven. So we've got four of our best people in the BDC working those opportunities. But the tool I like as well. I mean, I like that the tool... Um, that we put on the, the trade tool. I mean, it's got the, um, you know, the good, better, best. And I like that they add the tax, the tax credit you get if you trade it in. And, you know, the best is trade, you know, obviously trading it in. And um, I like that. I mean, it's almost it's not necessarily information overload, but it just gives the customer a lot of information. The, I, I like how it gives you the, uh, the how, you know, the days to sell. It shows how saturated the area you're trying to sell your vehicle in, how many of them are out there and how long it takes to sell it, because all that's good stuff to get the customer to go ahead and sell it to you or trade with you. So, mm -hmm. you know, a part of the biggest, the part of the biggest issue with deploying new, new technology and new innovations is the change that it takes people to get used to the change. How do you, how do you both deal with getting your employees behind change and doing something new and different? You don't, you don't accept otherwise. So. <laughs> That's right. And Jennifer no does a good, alternative. Jennifer does a good, yeah, she does a good job holding her people accountable. And um, they're probably, I mean, that's probably my best department of, you know, not throwing against them. We're, we're, we're doing dealer logic in our service department now where you're, it's kind of like a text tool and you can send pictures and videos of a customer's needed repair. Um, and that's been like an act of Congress because they do get 
um, stuck in their ways. But I've assigned one person now that the entire job is to go from our we've got like eight different rooftops, and he's just going to go rooftop to rooftop. So. And when you have your yeah. leader, the leadership basically says, oh, no, we're going to adopt this tool and we're going to use it. That's essentially what you've done. Right. And if you're, yeah, and that's a great point. So if your managers aren't, you know, if they're not doing it, then nobody's going to do it. So it, it right. takes, you know, it's got to come from the top down for sure. And so what would, we what did we, oh, something go ahead, Jen. that uh, that we, I mean, we changed our pay plans for our BDC. You know, the typical BDC, that their job is to drive traffic. But knowing what kind of market we're in, it's really important to purchase a car, not just to sell a car. So we've changed pay plans to give them a little bit more incentive to do that as well. Besides, you know, this is your job. You know, <laughs> besides that, there's we, we have tried to make it more um, more incentive for salespeople and our team to to want to buy cars. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? If you incent people to do something, then that's the behavior they're going to do, mm -hmm. right? That's a great point. Well, I'd say, what what uh, what would you say to other dealers who are might be considering moving to VinQ? Well, to definitely give it a, um, an opportunity. I mean, it's a, um, I would first look at what you're currently using. You know, I mean, you're you're going to have a trade tool on your site. I mean, most anybody that's got any website of, it's, you know, halfway decent um, is going to have that. And I mean, this is just a much more robust, robust tool, and it's probably going to be price comparable to what you're already paying. Mm -hmm. And then, do you do you either of you have any comments around the service? The customer support that you receive from the performance managers or from BinQ in general, anything that you'd or anything else that you'd like to add? I can't talk negatively in any way, shape, or form about Mike. He is super awesome. I mean, he's on speed dial. Him and I were talking ten times a day every day at <laughs> when we initially started. We still talk pretty frequently, but um, he's been extremely helpful with. You know, during setup, you know, we, we started towards the middle of May and we had lots of hiccups with messages with auto trader and car gurus and making sure, you know, one one buying center could see it, the other one couldn't, the customers couldn't. He, he worked really, really hard to help us get that corrected and get that fixed. And, you know, he's been a huge, huge help, um, huge help. He's definitely one of my better PMs for certain. That's great. I mean, they have yeah. been good to work with. I, you know, I, I was involved in the initial, you know, the shopping it and you know talking about it. We had some, you know, I mean, I guess one thing you could you could add is that, you know, we had some, you know, some unique uh, challenges where we're you know, eight different franchises and you know two different cities and shared inventory and shared DMSs and you know it was a it was a it wasn't easy to put together, but they were they worked well with us to overcome the 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 complexity of our of our our, our setup. And then how many uh how many cars do you sell in a month across all your dealerships? We've been I mean it's been like last year was about two hundred in Ashland or and two hundred Bluefield, so about four hundred a month. That yeah, would that's probably be a fair well, and it's dropping down right now, but it's just we're out of cars. I mean, I've got a Honda lot with two cars on it. I got a Nissan lot with single digit. I got Subaru and Kia single digit. I mean, it's it's really impacting us anew, and we're starting to earn more from them. And I think the new car market's going to start to go back in the the, the opposite direction, but it's going to be slow. And um, you know, I think some of the issue now too is just economy. You've got the everything going on with the uh, with inflation and gas prices and um and, and you're gonna have a lot of people with more negative equity now too um you know due to the you know the high transaction prices over the past couple of years so it's um you know i think it's going to get tougher but i mean i think that's why it's important to have tools like this to where you you know you can acquire you know um good used car inventory and not pay stupid prices at the auction and you're getting one owner or at least local owned vehicles i mean that brings a lot of value and and you're going to get them at a better price so it's 
and that's that's definitely a big part of our philosophy. So that's how you know how we ended up with NQ. I love it. Well, well, last question: What are your future goals for your business? <laughs> to retire in four years. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. You know, we I talk to dad about that all the time. And, you know, I mean, is now a good time to sell the dealership? Well, you could probably sell it and, <laughs> and get good money. I, well, why would you want to do that? We're doing good. Well, do we need to expand? Hell no. I don't want any more headaches. I don't want to buy any. So I, who knows? I mean, if the right deal came along, we would we would potentially, you know, look to to to, to buy another one. But, you know, I think we're we're kind of content with where we're at, uh, you know, we're, we're, we always keep our ear to the ground for opportunities, but I mean, we just want to, you know, we've got a you know, great team of employees and you know, over a hundred in Bluefield and over a hundred in Ashland. And, you know, you spend more time with your employees than you do with your family essentially. So, you know, this is our, this is all, they're also our family. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know that we're, I don't know that we're looking to have any more children, but we're, we'll probably keep the ones we've got, I guess. <laughs> well, I really enjoyed my conversation with Jason and Jennifer from Bill Cole Auto Mall, and I hope you did too. For more information, check us out on vinq.com. <laughs>